Carl Wilhelm Scheele was a Swedish Pomeranian and pharmaceutical chemist. Isaac Asimov called him Hard Luck Scheele, because he made a number of chemical discoveries before others who are generally given the credit. For example, Scheele discovered oxygen, and identified molybdenum, tungsten, barium, hydrogen, and chlorine before Humphrey Davy, among others. Scheele discovered organic acids tartaric, oxalic, uric, lactic, and citric as well as hydrofluoric, hydrocyanic, and arsenic acids. He preferred speaking German to Swedish his whole life, as German was commonly spoken among Swedish pharmacists. Biography, Schill was born in Stralsund, in western Pomerania, which was at the time part of Sweden. Schill's father Joachim Christian Schill, was a grain dealer and brewer from a respected German family. His mother was Margaretha Lenore Warnekrose. Friends of Scheele's parents taught him the art of reading prescriptions and the meaning of chemical and pharmaceutical signs. Then, in 1757, at age 14 Karl was sent to Gothenburg as an apprentice pharmacist with another family friend and apothecary Scheele retained this position for eight years. During this time he ran experiments late into the night and read the works of Nicholas Lemery, Caspar Newman, Johann von Le Paragraph Winston Kuhnkel and Georg Ernst Stahl. Much of Scheele's later theoretical speculations were based upon Stahl. In 1765 Scheele worked under the progressive and well-informed apothecary, C. M. Kjellstra paragraph M. in Malma paragraph, and became acquainted with Anders Genretzius who was a lecturer at the University of Lund and later a professor of chemistry at Stockholm. Scheele arrived in Stockholm between 1767 and 1769 and worked as a pharmacist. During this period he discovered tartaric acid and with his friend, Retzius, studied the relation of quicklime to calcium carbonate. While in the capital, he also became acquainted with many luminaries, such as, Abraham Barker and C.C.K., Peter Jonas Burgius, Bengt Burgius and Karl Friedrich von Schultzenheim. In the fall of 1770 Scheel became director of the laboratory of the Great Pharmacy of Locke, at Uppsala which is about 40 miles north of Stockholm. The laboratory supplied chemicals to Professor of Chemistry Torbern Bergman. A friendship developed between Scheele and Bergman after Scheele analyzed a reaction which Bergman and his assistant Johann Gottlieb Garn could not resolve. The reaction was between melted saltpeter and acetic acid which which produced a red vapor. Further study of this reaction later led to Scheele's discovery of oxygen. Based upon this friendship and respect Scheele was given free use of Bergman's laboratory. Both men profiting from their working relationship. In 1774 Scheele was nominated by Peter Jonas Burgius to be a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and was elected February 4, 1775. In 1775 Scheele also managed for a short time a pharmacy in Car Paragraph Ping. Between the end of 1776 and the beginning of 1777 Scheele established his own business there. On October 29, 1777, Scheele took his seat for the first, and only time, at a meeting of the Academy of Sciences and on November 11 passed the examination as apothecary before the Royal Medical College and did so with highest honors. After his return to Car Paragraph Ping he devoted himself, outside of his business, to scientific researches which resulted in a long series of important papers. Existing theories before Scheele, by the time he was a teenager, Scheele had learned the dominant theory of gases which in the 1770s was the phlogiston theory. Phlogiston, classified as matter of fire, was supposed to be released from any burning material, and when it was exhausted, combustion would stop. When Scheele discovered oxygen he called it fire air as it supported combustion. Schill explained oxygen using phlogistical terms because he did not believe that his discovery disproved the phlogiston theory. Before Schill made his discovery of oxygen, he studied air. Air was thought to be an element that made up the environment in which chemical reactions took place but did not interfere with the reactions. Schill's investigation of air enabled him to conclude that air was a mixture of fire air and foul air. In other words, a mixture of two gases. Scheele performed numerous experiments in which he heated substances such as saltpeter, manganese dioxide, heavy metal nitrates, silver carbonate and mercuric oxide. 
In all of these experiments, he isolated the same gas, his fire air, which he believed combined with phlogiston in materials to be released during heat releasing reactions. However, his first publication, Chemische Abendlung von der Luft und dem Feuer, was delivered to the printer Sideris in 1775, but not published until 1777, at which time both Joseph Priestley and Lavoisier had already published their experimental data and conclusions concerning oxygen and the phlogiston theory. The first English edition, Chemical Observation and Experiments on Air and Fire was published in 1780, with an introduction chemical treatise on air and fire. The theory of phlogiston. Schill achieved astonishingly prolific and important results without the expensive laboratory equipment to which his Parisian contemporary Antoine Laurent Lavoisier was accustomed. Through the studies of Lavoisier, Joseph Priestley, Schill, and others, chemistry was made a standardized field with consistent procedures. Although Scheele was unable to grasp the significance of his discovery of the substance that Lavoisier later named oxygen, his work was essential for the abandonment of the long-held theory of phlogiston. Scheele's study of the gas not yet named oxygen was prompted by a complaint by Tor Bernalot Bergman, a professor at Ursala University who would eventually become Scheele's friend. Bergman informed Scheele that the saltpeter he had purchased from Scheele's employer, after long heating, produced red vapors when it came into contact with acetic acid. Schill's quick explanation was that the saltpeter had absorbed phlogiston with the heat and gave off a new phlogisticated gas as an active principle when combined with an acid. Bergman next suggested that Scheele analyze the properties of manganese dioxide. It was through his studies of manganese dioxide that Scheele developed his concept of fire air. He ultimately obtained oxygen by heating mercuric oxide silver carbonate, magnesium nitrate, and other nitrate salts. Schill wrote about his findings to Lavoisier who was able to see the significance of the results. His discovery of oxygen was chronologically earlier than the corresponding work of Priestley and Lavoisier, but he did not publish this discovery until 1777, after both of his rivals had published. Although Scheele would always believe in some form of the phlogiston theory, his work reduced phlogiston to an unusually simple form, complicated only by the fact that chemists of Scheele's day still believed that light and heat were elements and were to be found in combination with them. Thus, Scheele assumed that hydrogen was composed of phlogiston plus heat. Scheele speculated that his fire air or oxygen combined with the phlogiston in objects to produce either light or heat. When other chemists later showed water is produced when burning hydrogen and that rusting of metals added weight to them and that passing water over hot iron gave hydrogen, Schill modified his theory to suggest that oxygen was the salt, and that when added to iron, water was reproduced, which added weight to the iron as rust. New elements and compounds, in addition to his joint recognition for the discovery of oxygen, Schill is argued to have been the first to discover other chemical elements such as barium, manganese, molybdenum, and tungsten, as well as several chemical compounds, including citric acid, lactic acid, glycerol, hydrogen cyanide, hydrogen fluoride, and hydrogen sulfide. In addition, he discovered a process similar to pasteurization, along with a means of mass-producing phosphorus, leading Sweden to become one of the world's leading producers of matches. Schill made one other very important scientific discovery in 1774, arguably more revolutionary than his isolation of oxygen. He identified lime, silica, and iron in a specimen of pyrolyzide given to him by his friend, Johann Gottlieb Gunn, but could not identify an additional component. When he treated the pyrolyzite with hydrochloric acid over a warm sand bath, a yellow-green gas with a strong odor was produced. He found that the gas sank to the bottom of an open bottle and was denser than ordinary air. He also noted that the gas was not soluble in water. It turned corks a yellow color and removed all color from wet, blue litmus paper and some flowers. He called this gas with bleaching abilities, dephlogisticated muriatic acid. Eventually, Sir Humphrey Davy named the gas chlorine. Chlorine's bleaching properties were eventually turned into an industry by Berzelius and became the foundation of a second industry of disinfection and deodorization of putrefied tissue and wounds in the hands of Labaric, by 1824. Death, in the fall of 1785, 
Schill began to suffer from symptoms described as kidney disease. In early 1786, he also contracted a disease of the skin, which, combined with kidney problems, so enfeebled him that he could foresee an early death. With this in mind, he married the widow of his predecessor, Pohu, two days before he died, so that he could pass undisputed title to his pharmacy and his possessions to her. While Scheele's experiments generated substances which have long since been found to be hazardous, the compounds and elements he used to start his experiments were dangerous to begin with, especially heavy metals. Scheele had a bad habit of sniffing and tasting any new substances he discovered. Cumulative exposure to arsenic, mercury, lead, their compounds, and perhaps hydrofluoric acid which he had discovered, and other substances took their toll on Scheele, who died at the early age of 43, on May 21, 1786, at his home in Car Paragraph Ping. Doctors said that he died of mercury poisoning. Published papers All of the following papers were published by Scheele within a span of 15 years. See also, Scheelite, Scheele's Green, Pharmacist, Pharmacy, Pneumatic Chemistry, List of Independent Discoveries. Notes References Abbott David Biographical Dictionary of Scientists, Chemists. New York, Peter Bedrick Books pages 126 a Euro 127. ISBN 0-911745-81-5. Bell, Madison S. Lavoisier in the Year One. New York, W. W. Norton and Company, Incorporated. ISBN 0-393-05155-2. Cardwell, DSL from Watt to Clausius, The Rise of Thermodynamics in the Early Industrial Age. Heinemann, London Pages 60 Euro 61. ISBN 0-435-54150-1. Dobbin, L. Collected Papers of Carl Wilhelm Scheele G. Bell and Sons, London. Faber, Dwar Dead Great Chemists. New York, Interscience Publishers Pages 255 a Euro 261. Greenberg, Arthur A Chemical History Tour, Picturing Chemistry from Alchemy to Modern Molecular Science. Hoboken, John Wiley and Sons, Incorporated Pages 135 a Euro 137. ISBN 0 471 35408-2. Greenberg, Arthur The Art of Chemistry, Myths, Medicines and Materials. Hoboken, John Wiley and Sons, Incorporated Pages 161 a Euro 166. ISBN 0-471-07180-3. Schofield, Robert E. The Enlightened Joseph Priestley, A Study of His Life and Work from 1773 to 1804. Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania State University Press. ISBN 0 271 02459 3. Schechtman. Groundbreaking Scientific Experiments, Inventions, and Discoveries of the 18th Century. Connecticut, Greenwood Press. ISBN 0 313 32015 2. Sutton, Harry. Twelve Pioneers of Science. New York, Vanguard Press. External links, works by Carl Wilhelm Scheele at Project Gutenberg, works by or about Carl Wilhelm Scheele at Internet Archive, Scheele, Chemical Observations and Experiments on Air and Fire, Excerpts from the Chemical Treatise on Air and Fire, Scheele, Carl Wilhelm. Encyclopedia Britannica 1911. Carl Wilhelm Scheele's D. Carl Paragraph Nigel. Schwed. Ackert. D. Wissenschaft mit Glieds, Chemisch Abendlung von der Luft und dem Führer in German, Scheele, Karl Wilhelm. The Nuthall Encyclopedia. 1907. Sketch of Karl Wilhelm Scheele. Popular Science Monthly 31, 839 Euro 843 October 1887. The Scheele Monument at Stockholm. Popular Science Monthly 42, 685 a Euro 688 March 1893